This is a HeadGum Podcast. Monday, October 10th. 10, 10. 10, 10, 10. No. Holy cow. 16. Oh. 10, 10, 16. Yeah, of course. Actually, we are hitting the road very soon. Our oh, shows shit. are on 10, 20 and 10, 21 and That's 10, 22. That's only 10 bits. Yeah. So in just, it's 10, 10. And in 10 days, we'll be in Minnesota, uh, in Minneapolis, in Detroit, and in Chicago. And the year? Is 2010. So again, 2016. All right. Uh, not a lot of tickets Fuck. available for those shows. So if you go to ifireyoushow.com or jakeandamir.com, you can grab them. Come to the shows. Our first Midwest podcast run ever. It's going to be a fucking party time. It's so going to be a fucking bloodbath. It's going to be insane. Everyone's going to be wet for some reason at the end. Damn right. Uh, so tickets still available. Grab them while you can. Uh, also, just wanted to say that this episode is brought to you by a new sponsor. That's what's up. Uh, distilled Jeans. Uh, has, D-S-T-L-D. That's right. So it's like distilled, spelled in a cool way, dot com. Yeah. Uh, distilled Jeans has revolutionized the fashion industry by creating luxury-grade denim that would normally cost you hundreds of dollars, starting at 65 bucks. I've paid a lot of money for jeans. Yeah, I try to buy a pair of jeans like every other year because they're so expensive. Uh, but distilled, uh, if you go to dstld.com, you can find the perfect pair with the perfect sh- uh, fit, and they'll ship it to you for free and guarantee it'll fit, or they'll send you a new pair till they're perfect. So it's really, there's really no risk. You cannot lose. Uh, so how does it work? You go to dstld.com, and if you go to slash if I were you, you get $10 off your first pair. So they start at 65 bucks. Very reasonable. And then it's $10 off your first pair if you go to dstld.com slash if I were you. One last time, it's just five letters, dstld.com slash if I were you. Guys, celebs are wearing them in magazines, so you know that's, that they're onto something hot. I was photographed in them in Teen Bop. No. No. It was uh, it was highlights for kids. Oh, you were goofus. <laughs> I was goofus. <laughs> you were goofus that day. Uh, so check them out. Distilled jeans. Uh, this is our live show in Toronto. So if you guys are coming to our live shows in Minneapolis, Chicago, or Detroit, listen to this one to get your dicks hard. Pretend, Woo! close your eyes, imagine yourself in this audience, just having a blast, having a good time. This was a really fun show. I'm excited. Not only was it fun, but they recorded it very well. So thank you to the people at JFL42 Mm -hmm. for giving us, handing us such fine audio. We do appreciate it. Uh, Things, of course, still got real. Yeah. So let's get started. Toda. Honestly, and I don't say this a lot, I deserve more than that. <laughs> Are you s- That was like a that 30 was a second. Six. No way. That was like borderline to standing ovation. Borderline a standing ovation. We couldn't even get a word out for like a full minute, it seemed. <laughs> Which was nice. And I do kind of appreciate you the adoration. You don't at all, because the first thing you said wasn't thank you. It was... I deserve more than that. And now you're making a very ineffective looking fist. Oh. You Bring the weakest guy on here. I want to friggin' clock his chest. You are the weakest guy. <laughs> Give me the second weakest one then. I want to see a really boring fight. That's probably me, actually. Uh, how the hell are you guys? Oh my gosh. Yeah. This is what it's like, yeah. Yeah, this is good. This is cool. Yeah, this is appropriate. You guys, look at you all guys these beautiful all listen. people in the front row. I saw you today. Yeah. Is that possible? Does anybody here, has anybody never heard our podcast before? They're just dragged here by a very, 
Nice. You guys are still excited to yell, but you've never yeah. seen the show, which is like a great place to be. They're, they're pumped to try it out. I love that. Which is fun. It's exciting. Uh, we'll try to be funny for everybody. Um, no but inside you, jokes. You, you like 10 people least of all. Yeah, I'll definitely. We care about you the least just because... We're more like about the day ones. Who's a day one? <laughs> <laughs> That's... Probably true. We love being here. I love being in a city where it feels like there's more Jews in it than just us two. Yeah. Where are my Jews at? Yeah. yeah. Where are we doing Rosh Hashanah next week? Very good. Very good. I want you all to make sure you get to the temple for high holidays. That's really good. Where are the Jews at again? Where are the single lady Jews at? My, Amir's mom made sure I asked that. So there was how many? Just one Whose over parents there. Parents don't You're want a single their Jewish child. lady. Yeah, actually, whoa, she's a goddamn dime, dude. I can tell your parents I'm a doctor so easily. He kind of looks like one. I kind of resemble what a doctor is, but still, yeah, that counts. It sure does. I'm straightening teeth, according to them. They don't need to know what I really do, which is sit into a sit in a room with Jake and talk to a microphone. <clears throat> uh, all right, should we get this party started? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's sit down. Whew. Or should I Ooh. say potty started? P-O-D-D. Get off the stage, man. What? <laughs> get out of here. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> Are you for real? I want to move up a little bit. Is that going to fuck with everybody's thing? Like, can we do that? Is that fine? Especially if only you do it, it would fuck it up. Yeah. Like if I was still back Ooh. there. This feels dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Every good comedy show has Everything. three minutes of moving a table. <laughs> Everything on this table is imperative to me. <laughs> Nothing so on the important. table matters to me. Okay, here we go. This is nice. Now I can see. Oh, hey, how are you? Are you taking a photo? You can do it. Take it. I'll pretend that I'm doing something. Yeah, like, all right, go ahead. Oh, this is good. Yeah, every, you'll... This is so candid. <laughs> <laughs> so you want, you want the view of the show to be you laughing at them? <laughs> In a perfect uh, world, a comedy show is the performer cracking up right. at the crowd. You're right. I fucking apologize. All right, so this is... Oh, that's really good. It's actually really good. <laughs> I'm making a point here. <laughs> I'm making oh, wait, a point good. here. That's your Robert De Niro on a podcast. I'm making a point here. Yeah. Um, this is so exciting. It doesn't feel like a Wednesday night. It feels like a Friday. Are you guys ready to party? Yeah. Are we going to get turned up tonight? Toronto. Uh, so this is an advice podcast. The way it works is that Jake and I get emails from a ton of people all around Canada, and they're all seeking our advice. Some live in Canada. Calgary, some Edmonton, some Toronto, Vancouver, Nova Scotia, Ottawa. Keep on going. Halifax, Halifax. Montreal. Yeah, where else? Banff. Uh-huh. Banff. Mm, right, right by the Beaufort Sea, way up there. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, where? Uh, I regret this, actually. <laughs> this is a boring game. Everyone scream little towns in Canada at us. <laughs> oh, yeah. no, I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't say Montreal. That was the last one, Montreal. And, I um, said it. These people are confused. They're seeking our guidance. We do our best to advise them. Sometimes we're alone, in our room, semi-clothed, hard at best, soft at worst, uh, advising these people. Sometimes we're in a room of a thousand of our closest friends, and that's tonight. How fortunate we are. How lucky we are to be here tonight. You whispered that in my ear backstage, too. It wasn't cool then. It's not cool now. Okay. Um, as always, these are going to be real emails from real people. We're going to give them fake names in order to... to <clears throat> Crandis, got you. What's that? Crandis. Crandis has followed us. Crandis, 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 Crandis. You, you are the bane of my existence, sir or ma'am. I don't even know. And? <laughs> Why are you guys yelling? I already said Crandis. <laughs> but I love your enthusiasm. Um, Crandis is a male. Crandis is a male who writes. 
I just forgot how to read. This is insane. Really? This no, is the worst possible it. time. I got it. Okay, go for it. Sup, dudes. I've recently found myself in the stickiest of situations. My current GF, who I live with, is working with her ex, who drives a pretty fast motorcycle. (laughs) He drops her home from work maybe two to three times a week. The thing is, every time he drops her off, she becomes a goddamn horny cock monster... And wants to ravish me the second she walks in the door. She says it's... <laughs> I, I, I honestly... We're going to get there. I don't know if this is ha hey, worthy. <laughs> this is more of a sad ha. Hey. Ha. Hey. Ha. Hey. She says it's the vibration of the motorbike on her clitoris. She even we, asked... we all knew what it was. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's hugging this dude from behind. She even asked if I could buy a hog of my own. I'd be down, but I'm freaking terrified of them. (laughs) So you wouldn't be down. (laughs) He's completely in, if not for this one bad fact. So what do I do? Buy the bike and overcome my fear? Forbid her to get lifts from this dude. Or change the subject. (laughs) He's in the middle of the conversation right now. <laughs> Please oh. help. I don't even want a helmet. Love, Crandis. Let's go up for Crandis. Um, okay. Thoughts? Initial frustrations, fears, comments, questions. Ultimately, I think it's a good thing that the girl still wants to have sex with her boyfriend when she comes home from the, the uh, you know, her ex sort of getting her riled up. <laughs> yeah, isn't it weird to be emasculated while a girlfriend is asking you to ravish her? Yeah. It is, it's, it is kind of something you wouldn't really be that excited to do. Like, hey, my ex got me horny. <laughs> Every time so he drops her off to her, he's like, hey, bro, finish the job for me. <laughs> I brought the ball to the one if you want to carry her home. You're the go line back. Sometimes she wakes up at 2 a.m. and texts her boyfriend just for a ride around the block. Yeah. Actually, will you just call me back? I'll put my phone on vibrate. Oh, yeah. He could find other things that vibrate in his house, like a massage chair. Oh, that's good. Hey, baby, I don't want to ride a motorcycle. Those are dangerous. What if I get you uh, one of the, a shower yeah. head that sort of rumbles? Here's something that's a little less, less death-defying. Oh, what he drives... He obviously... You would imagine that he drives a, a, a Hyundai Sonata? Yeah, a, a, hi, yeah, a Sonata hybrid. Uh, yeah, I was yeah. thinking it was a, a Hyundai. Hyundai. Yeah, Sonata. Um, so Excellent pronunciation of Hyundai. Little, yeah, sorry, what was that? I was saying you pronounced Hyundai very correctly. Hyundai? Yeah, a Hyundai. lot of people just say Hyundai. Hyundai. But you, yeah, you pronounce it very well the I way you say Hyundai. Very, I, Hyundai. Hyundai Sonata. Oh. So is it so, Japanese or is it Spanish? A little bit of both, and that's the beauty of the Hyundai the Sonata. Sonata. Uh, either way, what I'm trying to say is you put a vibrator in the seat of the passenger seat on your Hyundai Sonata. <laughs> this is a weird car commercial pitch. <laughs> I don't think you got the job. This guy's just a car salesman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's it called? What's the machine that's also a dildo? A Sibian? A what? A Sibian? <laughs> You wanted to install a Sibian? I did not say that. You could do a little rabbit, like a little, uh, just a little clit tickler. <laughs> You don't have to do full Sibian. It's not <laughs> oh, be disgusting. I'm sorry. How, how rude It's actually of really suggest. foul. We have, we're in front of a bunch of strangers right now. And yeah. We're talking well, about a, a, a Sibian. <laughs> I apologize for my friend. Uh, I don't think he can forbid her from riding the motorcycle. I think that that's the worst wienerish thing he can do. Right, right. That, that much is clear. It's like, yeah, baby, I can get a hog or actually <laughs> never ride on his. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, I'm looking into uh, Kawasaki, Ninja, whatever. Um, <laughs> in case I don't get it, don't ever ride with him again. Uh, what does the CC mean after the numbers? Anyway, changing the subject, what was Final Jeopardy last night? It was, <laughs> it was hard. <laughs> yeah, Nick got it. <laughs> oh, Nick's the X? Yeah, Nick got the answer. That's really cool because yeah, he's he... smart, hot, and he has a hog. Oh, man. Can you imagine him taking off his helmet? 
Oh, <laughs> yeah. You better believe he has long hair. Oh, he shakes it out, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, baby. The ex giving the ex a motorcycle ride that gets her wet. Right. So how do we actually help this guy out? Because in the end of the day, his girlfriend is coming home and fucking him because her ex is still getting her off a little bit. Yeah. Put a branch in front of his motorcycle. Interesting. She said so instantly. <laughs> Uh, what we, knowing, <laughs> knowing that we would all know like that she's done to it before. You before. <laughs> Sorry. Takes uh, off the helmet, horribly disfigured face. <laughs> ah! You've committed murder. <laughs> who, who said that? The branch. You're a murderer. Police. At the very least, a vehicular manslaughtist. <laughs> um, yeah, you sort of have to get a motorcycle. That's the okay. worst thing ever. Yeah. If he's as scared as I am, uh, he should never do that. Because there's one thing worse than not riding one. It's, it's like riding one and not knowing how. So, like, the, the thing is, like, like constantly getting away But think away of the vibrations him. that that would provide. Like, n- not just, like, a smooth ride. Like a poof, poof, Oh, poof, yeah. Poof, poof, poof. Suddenly you're coming. <laughs> Everybody's coming. <laughs> Half the joy of the hog is to get your rocks off. Uh, I actually, frankly, I don't hate killing the guy. Is what? Uh, it could definitely look like an accident. You, you're, you're suggesting not doing it while his girlfriend is on it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got you. But that was on rollerblades, the Big Daddy scene, and this would be a motorcycle. So this would like... No, let's hear her out. I'm sorry, it wouldn't, it wouldn't result in bodily harm. It would it result in instant death. Uh, <laughs> that being said... Pretty funny. <laughs> I like that as a set piece to a dangerous movie, but I don't know if I can advise this guy to kill somebody else. Yeah, that's irresponsible. Um, what can he do? Uh, can't buy a motorcycle because he's too scared. Can't mm-hmm. forbid the lady uh, because that's too uh, lame. Mm-hmm. The only thing he can do is the third option, which he says change the subject. <laughs> it's a good so, idea. like, you're the girl and I'm the guy, and you ask me. Oh, yeah. Hey, will you, will you uh, buy a motorcycle so I can uh, get wet with you instead of my ex? <laughs> Let's list our favorite apples. <laughs> oh. uh, Macintosh. Oh, this is uh, working. Delicious Red. This is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Granny Smith. <laughs> honey Red? Oh, Honey Crisp is a good apple, actually. Yeah. Good on you. See, this is, it's already happening. We're already talking about something else. <laughs> She's definitely going to fuck her ex. All right, let's move on. All right. One more time for Crandis. This is another guy. We need another guy's name. <laughs> what do we think? Oh, wait, wait. I heard one. I finally heard one. I finally Did heard you one. Really? Yeah, I heard Wayne Gretzky. Really? Yeah. He's a famous hockeyist. Oh. Uh, hey, guys. I was hoping you could give me some advice. I'm a 22-year-old guy from Australia still living at home. And a little while ago, I snuck, into the, uh, snuck out in the middle of the night to go skinny dipping in our... Hey. <laughs> with a lady... Oh, now really. Hey. <laughs> in our next-door neighbor's pool. I feel like we've wasted it on the earlier one, but yeah. Yeah, hey, sure. You blew your hat. Turns out, though... The next morning, my brother heard the neighbors talking about how their puppy had run away during the night. (laughs) It seems that not closing the gate properly when I left their yard... It seems that not closing the gate properly when I left their yard because I didn't want to make too much noise gave their brand new puppy the opportunity to escape. See, now aren't you guys glad that we called this guy Wayne Gretzky? He's a goddamn puppy murderer. So what should I do here? At the moment, no one even suspects that I had anything to do with it. So it's not even like I'd have to lie. I could just not say anything. On the other hand, am I a puppy murderer for this? I did mention that. As I said, it was a brand new puppy. (laughs) So it's unlikely to find its way back and may even die in the streets. Also, I should probably feel guilty for giving the neighbors another reason to argue. They seem to do that a lot. And this certainly wouldn't help the situation. Dog's fault? Their fault? My fault? Thoughts? <laughs> Thanks, guys. Love the show. Love Wayne Gretzky. Let's get up for Wayne. All right. The great one. Yeah. 
Well, right off the bat, let's take dog's fault off the table. It was a brand new puppy. Yeah. Brand I new mean, this, this baby had just left the yard. Are I mean, this was gonna... a brand new puppy. What are you going to do with that ice? Huh? <laughs> what? Why is, ha- why is this happening? Oh, my fingertips are so warm. <laughs> oh, I'll stroke see, no, a bowl stop, of ice. I have to use this at some point. <laughs> I'm going to put it in my glass. Oh, I thought you were just using it to chill the whiskey. <laughs> no. The whiskey's right here. <laughs> Great. Now the dirty bottle's in the ice. <laughs> You don't know how this ice was made to begin with. <laughs> I'm cleaning the ice by rubbing it on your fingers. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Uh, okay, not Doc's fault. It is your fault. It is his fault. He is a puppy murderer by proxy. Would you say anything? Uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Live Forever. One thing that he's not doing is he's writing this email, like already trying to get away with the murder rather than going out and looking for the puppy. So at the very least, I feel like this is, this is a Billy Madison quote. <laughs> yeah, you get out there and you find that fucking dog. That thing's still alive. We got this email yesterday. All right? That's a brand new puppy. Sure, it's in Australia where everything kills you. <laughs> it's nudie. Yeah, now we're just yelling Billy Madison quotes. <laughs> you can do it. That's from Waterboy. Huh? <laughs> I know every single Adam Sandler quote there is. Come at me with your punch drunk loves, with your reign over me. <laughs> I've seen them all. <laughs> Little Nikki, it doesn't matter. As long as it's from Happy Gilmore or earlier, I'll know it. Here's a here's a subplot of this um of the subplot of this question is the fact that he like broke into the neighbor's yard to go skinny dipping with a right. girl. I would be too afraid to do that. But there are, like, certain moments where it's, like, everything's getting hot and heavy. Like, I've had someone drag me into, like, an unused conference room of a hotel. And, like, <sighs> That hey. sounds hot, but also could be really, really fucked up. They dragged you, like, against you. Oh, no, 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 no. I was etherized and dragged by my feet. Of course. No, no, no. It was... It was uh... Hung upside down from the, fe- <laughs> the ceiling and beaten within an inch of my life. It was, like, a lady that I was seeing, and she's like, let's... Would you ever, like, have sex in this room? And it was so, like, sexy for her. And I felt bad to be like, no, I'm afraid I'll get caught and arrested. Ooh. I'm really turned on to get a cab and spend 45 minutes getting back to my apartment yeah. where we can lock the door and turn out the light. Baby. Right. And that's what I... I feel weird and bad being, like, the bearer of bad news when someone is feeling so frisky and adventurous. Right. But certainly there's, like... there You have to draw a line somewhere. I you're, might draw it much higher than most people. Your fetish is being really, really, really safe. Absolutely. Where, I would jump inside yeah. of a condom if I could. <laughs> I would be a con- you're a condom she's wearing a condom That's there's right. a dental dam and then you're <laughs> both taking plan B for some reason <laughs> afterwards I'm using a grind guard just in case <laughs> I'd hate to get you pregnant and wear down my molars have you ever been to the point where like this cute sexy frisky moment and then you're like nah I feel weird this is bad no I- I've had sex in public like in front of people before but what if you got <laughs> ah, illegal? What if, you, um, what if you got arrested? Would you be okay with that? Would you be like, "That's a hot oh, cool yeah, thing that would to be, be arrested so funny. for"? Yeah, that would be fine. They'd be like, uh, "Would you get arrested for?" I went to Seattle and then I accidentally had sex in a conference room and then a uh, an Asian janitor caught me. <laughs> Why they, does he have to be Asian? I'm just painting a picture. <laughs> that is actually cool. Yeah. <laughs> Asian janitor caught me. We started Eiffel Tower in the Bay. (laughs) One thing didn't lead to another. We end up in 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 the drunk tank, and then we Eiffel Tower the police chief, believe it or not. Um, Unrelated to this incident completely. Sure, yeah. Uh, Have you ever gone skinny dipping before? Yeah, you know what? I think I told this story once. But Sorry, Scott. I I've been skinny dipping with you, actually. Yeah, we we did it once in the ocean, but I, oh yeah, we did go. We fully. were with other people though. It wasn't just us. Yeah, there was one other dude. Uh, you know Rosie, <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> Rosie was the ocean. Yeah, and another example of how like prude I am. I once went skinny dipping, still wearing my underwear. That's not skinny dipping. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's a bathing suit. <laughs> But they were like, they were pretty sheer. <laughs> Your honor. This is you convincing the girl who's naked in the water. <laughs> My little. This is really revealing, actually. 
You can see the pubes through the white. <laughs> if that's not hot, I don't know what is. <laughs> Where are you going? Um, oh, this life guy forever. killed a dog. Yeah, life forever. Yeah, you murdered a dog. You can't tell anybody. Would you say it's incredibly honest for him to go to the neighbors and be like, I went skinny dipping in your yard? Or would you say that's I stupid? I feel like I could delude myself into thinking I the dog didn't get out because the gate was open. He got out because the husband got into a fight with his wife, went out to the pub and, and left the door open behind him. How, why, do, why does he think the dog was running around the backyard? It's a newborn puppy. They're probably, they're probably watching over it every second. Of the day, they, honestly, they probably got the dog as a band aid for their relationship. They wanted to break up. They said, We can't do it. We have to raise this dog. Who has to take care of the dog? They fucking drowned the puppy in the pool. That puppy is dead, and it's not your fault. That's what I'm going to say to this Australian gentleman. Toda. Now I want this ice, and it's like, it's so. <coughs> Maybe there's, like, ice at the bottom that I didn't touch. <laughs> yeah. Read the next question. <laughs> <laughs> really? Is it that time already? What time is it? It's 10.06. I guess we are half an hour in. Why don't we do take a little break? And, uh... Thank you as well to Blue Apron for sponsoring this episode. Blue Apron's the best, man. They, thanks, dude. They teach you how to cook. Why did you say thanks? As if you're... Your Blue Apron or something? Oh, yeah. Well, I founded the company. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, the way it works is that for less than $10 a meal, Blue Apron delivers recipes and pre-portioned ingredients uh, to your house for you to cook and make delicious home-cooked meals. Yeah, I know what it is. <laughs> I <laughs> created the company. Uh, this is one of my original ideas. <laughs> uh, they teach you how to cook, yeah. and you're doing it affordably and sustainably so because there's no wasted ingredients. And everything tastes really good, and it's unique. There's variety. It's flexible. You can customize it with your preferences. That was When I started Blue Apron, that was one of the things no. that I wanted uh, – that I, no, you did that, not. I thought it was really important <laughs> to make sure that it was flexible and you could customize it. And best of all, especially for Nimrods like me, it's easy. Even I, who doesn't Amir know how to cook. Yeah, Amir Shmuel Blumenfeld <laughs> was able to follow these step-by-step -step easy instructions and create these awesome home-cooked meals. Yeah, we used to cook ourselves some nice meals in our old house together, buddy. I love that times of our lives. I miss you, man. Uh, so if you want to bring back those salad days... Why don't you make some salads? <laughs> uh, no, they have really great stuff like crispy chicken milanese, Thai green curry chicken, roasted pork, steamed buns. I mean, it's stuff that you never could imagine that you could make. And if you go to blueapron.com slash if I were you, you get your first three meals for free. That's right. We hooked you up, buddy. With free shipping as well. You're going to love how good it tastes, how good it feels. If you go to blueapron.com slash if I were you. Yeah, support my little endeavor. Uh, really <laughs> You're a billionaire it. for this, I think. Yeah, man. Blueapron.com <laughs> slash if I were you. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Thank you as well to Trunk Club for sponsoring this episode. Gracias, indeed, and namaste. The Trunk Club makes you look good. Mm -hmm. It's not a real secret. They basically assign you a real personal human stylist that helps dress you. Yeah, you thought you needed to be rich to have a personal stylist. No, you don't. Because the stylist doesn't cost any money at Trunk Club. You're just getting clothes in the mail, trying them on, keeping what you like, sending back what you don't, and that's it. There's no additional cost. They'll that even one's... ship it to you for free. It's, 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 it's perfect. Uh, unless you know exactly how to make yourself look cool, which very few people do, why don't you trust Trunk Club at least once to get the ball rolling? Yeah, get a little jump start. Jump starts, and then you know what brands you like. They're like, oh, by the way, you look good in a Billy Reed shirt. I'm like, oh, what's Billy Reed? Now I know what Billy Reed is. Now when I go shopping, I can look for Billy Reed. Stuff like that. This, advert, this podcast is also brought to you by Billy Reed. <laughs> I love Billy Reed. <laughs> and if you, go to, if you live in Dallas, New York, L.A., Chicago, D.C., DC, or now Charleston, you can stop by a Trunk Club clubhouse and, do, and use your stylist in person for free. Yeah, that's fun. Uh, so get started today. Go to trunkclub.com slash if I were you. That's trunkclub.com slash if I were you. You fill out a questionnaire about what kind of clothes you like, what kind of style you want to strive for, and they assign you a personal stylist to make you look better. It's a pretty good gift for yourself or for a dude in your life that can use a little upgrade. Mm-hmm. 
And Wait, we're not trying to use a little upgrade. We're not trying to offend anyone. Nobody needs to be offended. But at the same time, yeah, like Jake said, who can't use a little bit of an upgrade? Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm perfect, but yeah, but maybe somebody you know isn't. <laughs> uh, so one last time, that's trunkclub.com slash if I were you. Let's get back to Toronto. Deuces. Thank you. Thanks for hearing Jake cry for an hour and a half, you guys. That was really probably the most emotional 90 minutes of my life. And I'm sure I think Jake appreciates it, too. I just can't believe the entire thing rhymed. It was, <laughs> I, like, blacked out for a second. It was really cool. Uh, all right. We have... <laughs> I love Toronto, yes I do. Oh, yes I love Toronto, and it's true. All right. <laughs> what a weird Canadian pirate shanty we made. You guys I love Stan, Toronto. Do you guys know Stan Rogers? He's like the greatest uh, Canadian folk singer of all time, actually, and uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of his. All right, go ahead. Um, 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 we need another guy's name. <laughs> wait, 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 let's get someone. We always hear these guys. Let's get someone yeah. from the back. From the back. I heard Jobin. I kind of yeah, like yeah. Jobin. That was it, Jobin. Oh, you heard Jobin? Yeah, yeah. I right. was waiting until somebody be quiet, and then uh, we heard it. Jobin. Jobin writes... Dear Jake and Amir, I'm an 18-year-old, and I will be starting my freshman year of college in just a couple days. Hell yeah. I have not really talked much with my new roommate. The only thing we have discussed is what we will be bringing to the room. He told me he has a TV, and I told him that I recently bought a futon. I'm not sure, but it sounded (laughs) like he he had to recently (laughs) bought a futon. It was $99 at Walmart. I got a hell of a deal. An Kanye? It's an Ikea Kanye. Ooh. I'm not quite sure, but it sounded like he wanted to set up the room so that we would both use the futon across the TV. I do not plan to on, I do not plan on ever watching an actual television and would very much prefer to keep our sides of the room separate. I tried to hint at it, but I don't think my point got through. My question is, is there a way to politely let my new roommate know that I don't want to share my futon? Or will this make me make it too bad of a first impression? Any advice would be much appreciated. Love, Jobin. 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 Doesn't want to make a bad first impression. He's made a terrible first impression on me. This guy doesn't want to share an entire couch. That's the definition of a couch. It's a chair that you share. Yeah. This is actually a good couch pitch, though. I don't know why we brought you back in after the Hyundai thing. Imagine a bench with cushions. Hear me out. So it's on my side of the room. It's facing the wall. Nobody uses it but me. Am I fair to say that this is how to use this futon? If you want a solo couch, then you have to buy a chair. That's how it fucking works. I'm not going to watch your shitty TV. You don't watch my couch. It's the worst impression you can make. I only want to watch The Daily Show, okay? (laughs) Once in a while. That means you can sit on my couch for 22 minutes with commercials. With commercials. How big does he think a dorm room is that he feels like he gets a (laughs) futon to himself? Yeah, the room is already 80% bed. Yeah. And then 20% futon. Yeah. And you better not touch it. So is there a way? Do you remember your, like, freshman year roommate, what should I bring situation? Uh, yeah, I called him. I said I was going to get a microwave. He was going to get a TV. We... Oh, you told him that? (laughs) What if he's like, I already got a microwave? I, I would, that would have been fine. I was, uh, Two yeah. microwaves, no TV. We're starting off the wrong foot, Hurwitz. Or should I say her bitch? I can't wait to meet you on Thursday. Hoorah! <laughs> I moved in with a 48-year-old RA. <laughs> in the ROTC. <laughs> he was a rot ara So, would you say it's okay to bring a futon and not let your roommate share it? I think in college, everything gets shared. So you better believe, like, if you think that your roommate's not, like, jerking off on your futon, that's going to happen. 
So the close, like the the faster he accepts that is going to be better for him. Yeah, I would hate it if my roommate. Oh, you're like, all right, hey, good news. I got a pretty awesome TV. What do you think you should bring, dude? And then you go uh, a couch. <laughs> you're like, oh, okay, uh, we're already good on furniture. Maybe you bring a microwave or a toaster oven. Maybe speaker. Oh, you want, I, I I'm going to be bringing a, a futon. Where would it go? In the fucking middle of the room. That's where the only non-bed part is. No, there's... Uh, you want to put a bed where the only non-bed part you, is. You bunk the beds, you have the futon, you get the TV, there's two desks, two tiny little <laughs> closets, you both have the shower caddy, <laughs> and you masturbate when each other is in class. That's college. <laughs> Jake would know he went to five. Mas o menos. <laughs> what was that? Más o menos. I'm bilingual. <laughs> what is What's it so mean? funny about that? What does that word mean? More or less in Spanish. <laughs> you little puta. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Real quick. Don't tell him not to sit on your couch. True or false? Share the couch, you little asshole. Share the couch. You can't always lie down on it. It's not, futons aren't that comfortable. If I, I swear, if I come back from class and you're standing, sitting on the couch, my couch... That's a futon, by the way. It folds. It's a bed. <laughs> this becomes this, and you can't have any of it. <laughs> not the it's back, a... not the couch, not Sit the bed. Sit on the floor and watch your TV. <laughs> bad roommate. Hashtag bad roommate. Bad you is correct. Uh, all right, here's another good one. Um, shit, I'm really sorry. It's another guy. Volleyball. Volleyball. <laughs> I think I maybe heard somebody yell Dan. That's good. Did, did I somebody not? yell Dan? You did? You yelled Dan? All right. Uh, I don't know. Dan's so boring. Let's just pick one person. Oh, that's good. We Out choose of, the person, and, they and then choose that the person name. has to yell. By How the about way, that guy who's coming should, back to his seat? We should do that all the time. This guy who's coming back to his seat. Did you just go to the bathroom? <laughs> Where'd you go? For what? He wanted to vape. All right, sir, if you can keep standing up and then yell a name at us. Wobbly Bob? Wobbly Bob. Wobbly Bob. That's actually a really great name, Wobbly Bob. Uh, you want to read this question? All right. Hey, guys, a few weeks ago, I was introduced to a girl, hi, uh, <laughs> through some mutual friends. We hit it off right away, and everything was going well. Great. Huh? We made out at a party. Huh? Again, great. she invited me to... And oh, we made out. At a, sorry, I'm a bad reader. We made out at a party she invited me to, and the texting slash flirting was going very smooth. Perfect. Yeah, you're right. Now comes the part that I wasn't expecting. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> that is where we're all hoping this goes. Now comes the part I wasn't expecting. As it turns out, a friend of mine has also hooked up with her. This was a while before I met her, so I didn't really have a problem with it. That was until I found out he fisted her. <laughs> hey! <laughs> a lot of question marks and exclamation points, too. Uh, my friend who did this wanted to be up front and told me about it. He didn't completely fist her, but he did get all of his fingers most of the way up. In there, so it's basically fisting, isn't it? Hey! They're all the way up. <laughs> Would you sleep with a girl who you know got fisted by a good friend? I like girls to be adventurous, but the fisting idea doesn't sit well with me. I apologize for the vulgar theme, but this is sadly the situation I'm in. I'm really unsure what to do, so any feedback would be much appreciated. Thanks in advance. Wobbly Bob. Wobbly Bob. Wobbledy, wobbledy, wobbly, 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 what? That's a good question. Because I'm not being like, hey, pound me. You know, like... Yeah. Hey, <laughs> rock, paper, scissors, shoot. I got rock. This, this is not a fist. That's paper. That's honestly, paper. That's paper. That's honestly paper. Your girlfriend got paper, dude. <laughs> Arr! His some name, sort of yeah. cartoon dog. Yeah. Arr! So, this isn't quite a fist. Um... That's a hand. That's a hand. So talk to the hand. Your girlfriend got a hand. And by a round of applause, let's all give me a hand. Um, <laughs> I don't know what that You guys meant. didn't have to do that. You didn't have to do that. I do appreciate it. Um, when I read this, I... 
tell me of this. This is my theory. Half the people here thought anal fisting. Half the people thought vaginal. Who thought anal? Okay, so and it's a who knows less that that's half. the dumbest thing you could think? <laughs> I I heard fisting and I was like, oh, you have a fist in the no, butt. Fisting is vaginal. Fi- fi- fisting is vaginal, and then anal fisting is anal, and okay. sometimes even anal fisting is just uh, not. It, it was. It's just this. It's the. It's, it's what he was talking. It's just awesome. <laughs> <laughs> who said anal fisting is awesome? And it, are you somebody that was anal fisted? Because it feels like they, the person that gets fisted doesn't think it's as awesome. They're like, that was an accomplishment. Are you famous DP Wally Fister? Is that what you are? Uh, it is weird because it's like, I can get over a friend hooking up with an ex or a current girlfriend, even though every time I, like, when I'm, I'm going to marry someone and then whenever I see my friend, he can give me the fucking smug look of I fucked your wife. Yeah, like seeing your newborn son. I fisted your mother. <laughs> I can get over the I had I slept with, I hooked up with. I don't know if I can get past the... By the way, this but, was in your lady. But this, all five? It seems like it was only four digits. Because <laughs> it's like the last four digits of your social security. <laughs> don't give that to anybody. <laughs> uh, would you be able to get over a friend fist? Yeah, because this is thinner than my penis. That's what's up. You want me to prove it? Oh, that's your hamstring. <laughs> Still, it was though. very thin. <laughs> I knew where to grab. Uh, if I was, the, and I would love to be the friend that had fisted it beforehand. What an honor that would be. I'd be like, whenever I'd see the guy, I'd be like, "Yo, pound it. <laughs> Come on, man, pound it." <laughs> oh, Get made you smell. Me. Anyway, how is the old lady? <laughs> I'm a bad guy. Yeah. Like in a movie, there's a bad guy. Mm-hmm. That's my character. I think it's fine. I you think, think it's fine. fine? You can get over a fisting? Yeah, I think it's all right. You also, get... this wasn't a fisting. So it was a, it was a four, four fingering. Yeah, but you never want to get into that debate either. Like, by the way, but you didn't fist her. <laughs> all you did was take four fingers in my girlfriend's coochie. <laughs> Oh, well, here's what you do. You just, like, he says, hey, full disclosure, I fisted her. He's like, oh, you know what? I actually, I heard that. That was a really disgusting experience for my girlfriend. So, and then, and then that guy sort of crawls back into his own head. He's like, hey, should I stop fisting people? <laughs> like, maybe when I finger people, it's more about getting them off instead of some weird sadistic experiment of how much I can fit. Yeah. It's, Can I get my fucking watch to, sh- to, to touch her clit? Yeah. What a bad idea he has. I want your vulva to turn on, uh, to turn on the indigo. <laughs> the indigo on the In my Casio. Apple iWatch. Yeah. You just say, oh, yeah, I haven't done that. Mostly I just uh, get her off using two fingers, and I guess you took four and you couldn't do it, brother. Oh. Howdy doodle. <laughs> That's really cool, man. Thanks, dude. Which two fingers do you use mostly? Index and uh, yeah, index and oh, two two side pinkies. I really like that. <laughs> I, I hate it. I feel disgusting for doing this. No one take a photo, but also do take a photo. <laughs> and your thumbs are in a Chinese finger trap. Uh huh. Can't pull so, them apart. Yeah. <laughs> So, actually, this is on the taint. This is on the... Oh, my God. This, this is, is quite clit. enough. And then, I feel bad. The, the I ring feel fingers bad. wake no. up. <laughs> You're doing then, uh, shadow puppetry. And these are for the hips. Oh, Spider-Man. Yeah. Have you ever seen uh, a dog? Oh. Oh, wait, the JFL thing. <laughs> Not even close, right? Uh, <laughs> how tall do you think you are if you stand up? <laughs> I assumed I was 12-1 in heels. Do you guys time for, have time for one more question? Uh, we're, we're going long, but honestly, we love Toronto so much. You guys are the fucking best. I mean, Jesus Christ. What a thrill this is for you guys. Um, <laughs> Andy Bloom, nice dude. What you say? Oh, wait, I like the thing where we point to someone. The Game Boy? Uh, I, I don't know if the Game Boy's here. 
Oh, is he not here? He might not be here. Because maybe he doesn't have his passport and he couldn't get oh, into he Canada. He had a DUI. He couldn't get through Canadian customs. <laughs> <clears throat> oh. 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 <laughs> 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 That's it. Whoa. Uh, oh. I, oh, that's, that's like 10 people that have never seen the show before. <laughs> I am the Game Boy. What a pleasure. What a pleasure it is to be here in Toronto. Oh. Uh, that's all I got. Let's and now, do your, now do your Danny Zuko being happy to be here in Toronto. Oh, Sandy. <laughs> that's very close to the Game Boy. That's actually not Now Zuko yeah. as the Game Boy happy to be in Ottawa. Uh-huh. Uh, uh. Go Grease Lightning, you turn on the motor jack. Grease Lightning, go. Grease Lightning. You are supreme. Uh, the chicks uh. will fist. Uh, well, do we have well, well, oh, wait, well, What about getting someone in the, way, the last row? Who's, who's here at the last? The dead last Can row? Can we bring the house lights up? Is that possible? Is that so quick and easy, or is that a hard thing to do, and then it'll take forever, and we can't do it because there's too many people? Yeah. Nobody's actually Just on while the we're working on it, can you guys play a stinger? Just play the Fetty oh, Wap no, no, stinger? No, no, we just don't like, like to do I that just want right like, I want all the media going uh, on here no, no, at no, the we same just time. Do, oh, the lights are going on. Oh, wow, there's people back here. Look at those two. Here we go. What about the guy going like that in the black shirt over there? Yeah, you raising your hand. Do you want to stand up and yell a name? Okay, wait, what's your name? Okay, what, and what's the name that you want to yell? Sadiq. Sadiq, what's his last name? Fucking Rogerson! <laughs> Rogerson? Yeah. Uh, all right. Good Lord. Sadiq, it's fucking Rogerson, writes, Hey, Jake and Amir, huge fan of all your work. I cheat on my girlfriend, and I think it makes me a better boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I'm much more affectionate and much less irritable because of it. However, I do sometimes experience a pang of guilt. So here's my question. If cheating on your girl makes you a better boyfriend, does it make it okay? Please say yes so I don't feel guilty anymore. Love the worst person on earth. Sadiq Dubes. Fucking Richardson. Rogerson. Rogerson. Uh, okay, yeah, let's Do you not... understand his logic, though? Um, I understand... You know what? I do understand his logic, because that does happen. I, as somebody that cheats on girlfriends... You, you Actually, you know what? You can boo, but I'm going to tell you a goddamn truth. As somebody who cheats on their girlfriends all the time, uh, when you do that, you wake up and you feel guilty, and you want to be closer to the person that you just hurt. So, boo is correct... But you I, understand what the logic I is. I understand, but I what I don't understand <clears throat> is that he, he's so like he's so deep into being backwards that he wants us to justify his bad behavior so that he doesn't feel guilty because there's this weird voice in his head where his parents succeeded even a little bit that mm -hmm. makes him say maybe this isn't a good thing. Should I stop? No, let me email Jake and Amir for now. Yeah. And get to the whole fixing myself later thing. I, I mean, I get, the premise is obviously flawed. Cheating on your girlfriend doesn't make you a better boyfriend. It actually makes you a very bad boyfriend. And but just in a way that if she doesn't know about it, if a tree falls in the woods, does it still make a sound? If she just feels like this boyfriend is being nice to her every no, let's six let's put that to, to rest. It makes a sound, obviously. Correct? You, <laughs> the tree falls down, it makes a sound. I mean, it it on a philosophical level, if nobody's there to experience the There's pain probably like of a squirrel that hears on. it. Good luck finding an empty fucking forest, dude. I like how logical you're thinking about this. He should replace cheating with bowling. So every six weeks, he fucking gets wasted, goes out, and bowls. Also, then he comes back and he's like, I'm so nice to my girlfriend. He still gets to be nice to his girlfriend every six to eight weeks. And then instead of feeling guilty, he's just getting better at bowling, which is well, actually not if he's pretty bowling, tight. What if he's bowling wasted? He's probably not that good at bowling. Well, that's why you're supposed to bowl. You're supposed to be wasted. That's why people do it. Cheers. Namaste. That's actually fine. Uh, so most of the time when he's not cheating on his girlfriend, that's when he's a bad boyfriend, right? Yeah. So when, he, when he's forgetting to fuck other people, that's him. That's, he gets irritable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I just... I'm 
dealing with a lot of work right now, and I haven't fucked one of your friends. What and, was like, that? I am just my boss is hounding me, <laughs> oh, and your friend Melissa awful. didn't blow me. Wait, who didn't and blow I'm you? I'm just like I'm just really overworked. Oh, that and sounds undercome. bad. Uh, what? Undercome. <laughs> What's that mean? Hey, <laughs> lachaim, <laughs> indeed. Uh, so, in conclusion, yeah. What do you think of the bowling instead of cheating idea? Bowling versus cheating. What's that? Were you asking me or were you asking the person that just yelled that bowling's not that cool? <laughs> <laughs> well, Actually, the bowling, you could still, you, you could still get off. Wow. Not using, the ball has three very tiny <laughs> holes. <laughs> and if you put your two pinkies in the little roof. Oh, and, and then, then your like, thumbs oh, in the hole. The Game Boy's back. <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> it's getting hot in here. <laughs> and that's the Game Boy fucking a bowling ball. And that's what we've been building up towards all night, is it not? Guys, thank you so much for coming to our show. I'm so happy to have been here. Thank you. It warms our heart to see us so many smiling faces. We, it makes us want to come back all the time. So thank you so much for coming and applauding and laughing and partying with us. Um, I don't know what else to say other than toda. Let's just end with a little song. Okay. Oh, oh Canada. Canada. Da, 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 da. you're still listening that means you're a huge fan and we appreciate you or you're driving and you thought it was too dangerous to skip to the next podcast Either or maybe way. you're washing dishes yeah and you can't you touch your phone yet because your fingers are like still soapy lots of different so you try to use your, like, your pinky buddy. knuckle but Let's it doesn't register stay focused we have shows <laughs> yeah we Minneapolis. Got shows coming up Minneapolis yeah. Chicago Detroit Detroit the Minneapolis one almost sold out. Chicago is a huge theater. We'd love to pack it. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. The yeah. Detroit one's not very big either. I think there's less than 50 tickets left for that. So get on that shit. These are Thursday, Friday, Saturday shows. You have no excuse not to come hang. Yeah, if you are debating it, think about this. It's We've had a podcast for over three years, and we're just coming to the Midwest for the first time. <laughs> Think about the next time we might do this. <laughs> I'll I'll be well, well dead. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll guys. be gone for this years. This may very well be your one chance to see us if you live in these areas. Uh, so please, come on down. Party with us. Maybe we'll hang out after. Take a picture or two. Oh, I'm definitely hanging out after. I'll hug some people or shake some hands, give some high fives. I don't care. I'm trying to meet some cool bros or some cool gals to take me out in mini shy town <laughs> Detroit, Detroit, the you've Motor ne- City. You've never been to Detroit. Never been to Detroit. Ever. Have you ever mm-hmm. been to Michigan? Uh, yeah, I've been to Michigan. Ann Arbor. Oh, yeah. Ann Arbor's fun. Yeah. Shit, go let's go to Ann Arbor, actually. That's a great idea. Yeah, so the Detroit show has been canceled. <laughs> We're no, no, it's still on. It's still on. Uh, we'll see you guys soon. Thanks for listening. Back next week. Bye. That was a HeadGum Podcast.